So welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us here at FX Streets. Um, I am coming to you from uh, pretty cold Chicago. All right. So uh, my name is Sam Sidon from Online Trading Academy, and uh, want to pick up where we left off last session. So we were together, I believe, a couple weeks ago. I think it was about two weeks ago or so. And uh, um, that during that session. That was really a, a lesson-based session where we laid out the strategy, the whole supply-demand concept, you know, from uh, kind of from the bottom up. And then, uh, okay, yeah, let me capture the chart again for you, Boyke. There you go. All right, uh, and uh, and then I and then I promised you that today we would go spend most of our time in the live market, starting to apply what we've learned. Okay. Now we 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 also started to do that last session. We found a bunch of levels in the bigger time frames, and uh, so we're going to go review some of those. A, a number of those have have met entry. Uh, the euro here is one of them that that hit our one of our levels yesterday. I don't know if anybody took uh, took that trade, but uh, we'll, we'll get into it. And I wanted to show you here too uh, on the screen before we get into the live market. Just a couple slides. I just have two for you. I just want to go over yesterday's uh, trading and today's trading so far. Now, uh, anytime I show you statements, uh, just so you know, make sure you understand full disclosure that th that's, uh, those are real trades. Those aren't demo accounts or hypothetical returns. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the trading, uh, trading world to uh, not just help with the education, but also trade. I mean, that's, uh, that's what this is all about, right? So if, we can do, if I can do that and, uh, and uh, help you succeed at this as well, then uh, I'm happy. All right, so let's take a look. So last time we were together, uh, one of the charts we focused on was this euro. Okay, now we're going to dive into the live market shortly, but uh, uh, but I took the picture. I took I captured this chart just about an hour ago, and uh, e uh, yesterday and today, price finally dipped down into the demand level that we found in the euro. Okay, all right. Remember, what is a demand level? When you see the word demand here, don't just think of conventional, the conventional word support. Okay? Remember, everybody has a different definition of support. If you really want to you know, uh, have the edge when it comes to trading, you have to take it beyond that. You have to think, okay, you know, how, do you, how, do you, how do you make money? Well, you have to buy low, sell high, or sell high and buy low. Okay, the next question is, where do you buy low and sell high? You know, how do you identify price levels uh, that where where the market's too cheap, and identify price levels where the market's too expensive? Okay. Uh, all right. Nice job, Car uh, Carol. Good job. So, you know, how do you identify those levels? Well, think about the only picture that represents that. The picture is this: a price level where the market is too cheap and is always going to turn higher is a price level where willing demand exceeds willing supply. Okay, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so, what does that picture look like on a price chart? Well, it's this. Okay, drop base, strong rally out of this area, right? Okay. Remember, why couldn't prices stay in this level? Why did they have to rally away in such strong fashion? Because there's way too much willing demand here, and you run out of sellers. Therefore, if and when prices come back to this level, okay. All right. No, not counter trend, Boyke. We don't want to be trading counter trend. We never want to be trading counter trend. Okay. That what we're doing is we want to, you know, we want to make sure that we're in in the trend when it begins. Okay. And then once the trend is underway, you know, we want to trade with that trend, but we never want to trade counter trend. Okay. Um, this only looks like, you know, buying here, like, uh, right. Um, gotcha. So so buying here. May look counter trend, but it's only counter trend because I think the industry, you know, the, the industry language is completely wrong. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, it looks, you know, it looks like we're buying in a downtrend. Well, you always want to buy when something's on sale and there's only a few of those items left, right? Okay, that's that's when prices are about to go higher, right? Okay. Um, it, it depends, Paula, what your definition of a, a downtrend is, if in an uptrend is, if you're Remember, we're not, we don't want to deal in the world of conventional technical analysis. In fact, we don't want any of our vocabulary to be in that conventional world, right? Okay? You know, think about it, uh, and I don't want to spend too much time on this part, but um, 
you know, you, you've had, you know, you know, all the conventional technical analysis books have the same information, same strategies, same everything, okay? But why is it then that everybody reads that stuff, follows those rules, but everybody loses money? How come nobody makes money with that stuff? It's because most people fail to question it and say, wait a second, okay, I know this information has been out here for 100 years, but, but does it make any sense, okay? Uh, so just be careful with that. All right, so take a look. Um, Forex spec, should I go long U.S. dollar now? I would say absolutely not, um, but we'll, we'll take a look uh, at the chart in a minute. So last part, when prices were down here yesterday, today, um, think about the buyers and sellers here. Who was selling? The people that were selling here are the people that read the books, the people that are just selling because this thing's in a downtrend, selling because of all the bad news, okay? However, uh, the problem is they're selling after a drop in price, and into a price level where demand exceeds supply. The laws of supply and demand guarantee that you're going to lose consistently if you do that. Okay? Therefore, we want to be the buyer to that novice seller. Okay? That's what I did in two different accounts. Uh, and actually, just closed out more of the positions. So this, this gain is much bigger. I just, uh, I'll have to wait till, for tonight's statement to, to show that. But, um, so not a not a not a big gain um, on this, and the trades you know just getting started. But uh, just wanted to show you that uh, for two reasons: number one, to educate you; number two, I don't want you to think I just come here and, and talk to you. I want you I want to make sure you know that I would never never suggest that you do anything that I'm not willing to do. All right. So again, the word supply, uh, another word for that is retail prices. The word demand, another word for that is wholesale prices. That's what they really are. Okay. Sell at retail prices to someone who's trained to buy at retail prices. Yesterday and today, for those of us that bought the euro, we're buying at wholesale prices from people who are trained to sell at wholesale prices. Okay? Yeah, so Paulo, in a minute I'm going to jump into the live market. Actually, let me show you this, Paulo. Good point. Um, but but uh, no, the uh, I, I didn't take those trades based, you know, took those trades because of where we're at in the big, big time frame. Um, but about an hour before the session just started, I just grabbed this chart real quick, so I apologize. It looks a little sloppy. But this is a trade I just took. I don't have the statement yet, so I'm just showing you the trade blotter. Um, this is all in the last hour. Little one-minute chart of the euro. Now, I took this trade in the, in the euro futures. But to your point, Paolo, take a look. Okay? Um, this is just a one-minute chart. Now, you can do this in the, fu in, the for in the euro futures, but I wouldn't try this in the, uh, in the spot forex. Okay? What I mean is going down to such a small time frame, all right? But but uh, there are plenty of opportunities to do what I'm going to show you here. Uh, this is what I just did in the last hour here. So a little demand level forms on a tiny time frame in the euro. Now, why was I interested in demand levels uh, and not supply levels on such a small time frame this morning? Because of where we're at in the larger time frame, okay? So as soon as price popped up with this green candle here, that told me that there's more willing demand here. That's the only reason why prices popped up. Okay, when prices came back down to this level, I had a very low risk, okay, higher reward buying opportunity. Okay, uh, so just a very quick little trade, but again, just full disclosure, took this trade in the Euro futures because it's such a small time frame, not the spot market. You could probably do the same thing in the spot market. You just the odds are going to be more stacked in your favor if you uh, if you do it in the futures on such a small time frame. Make sense? Okay. All right. So I wanted to share those those trades with you. And um, you know, in the euro again, you could be playing the euro for the much bigger time frame, bigger picture, uh, and that's you know that's fine too. Um, but once you know your here's the point though. Once you know that you're in that big picture sweet spot, okay, um, you could trade it for the bigger bigger, you know, swing trade that, that uh, it could possibly be, or you can find tiny little demand levels, and, and most of them are going to be golden, right? Okay, let me just make sure uh, I read back here, and let's see. Um, Abel, yeah, so everything we do at Online Trade Academy is very rule-based, and I'm assuming that most people in here were in our last session where we went over this in detail, uh, the lesson, okay? But yeah, when I, when I bought here, I bought right here at this top black line, with a protective sell stop just about a tick below the area, just about a pip or tick below the area, okay? Um, all right? Now, again, did I know for sure that this rally was going to happen? No, okay? Uh, believe me, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do follow the strategy 
a very simple rule-based strategy that is based on the, the irrefutable laws of supply and demand, right? I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm saying, all I'm saying is, look, how you make money buying and selling anything out there is exactly what you want to be doing here. And when prices, uh, you know, another word for demand is what? What else do we call this? What do we call this? We just went over it. Profit margin first uh, time trader there would be uh, the distance to your, your nearest opposing supply level. So what's another word for this demand level? Retail, exactly. And when prices are at, I'm sorry, <laughs> I messed that up. Paulo, you got it wrong, and, and I just read what you wrote and said it. Uh, all right, exactly, wholesale, right? These are wholesale prices, no problem. Uh, we both got it wrong. These are wholesale prices, and let me ask you, no matter where you live in the world, no matter what business you're in, when prices are at wholesale levels, do you want to be the buyer or the seller? What do you, what do you want to do? Yeah, you want to be the buyer, okay? Okay? But if you follow the world of conventional technical analysis, when prices are at wholesale levels, you're always going to be in a time frame in one a, a downtrend in one time frame or another. Okay? When when prices are at wholesale levels, the news is never going to be good. It's always going to be bad, okay? That's why most people are trained and conditioned to do the opposite of what you should do. So keep it simple. When prices are at wholesale levels, and retail levels are far away, you're better off being the buyer. Okay? Yes, Boyke, absolutely. Absolutely. The only thing we would add to it, Boyke, is we want to be a buyer at demand levels in an uptrend. We want to be a seller at supply levels in a downtrend. Okay? The only thing I'm going to add to that is in the larger time frame, we want to make sure that we're in the market when the trend begins. And that's what conventional technical analysis always keeps you out of. That's the difference. Okay. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Trying trader. Are you talking about this supply level here, or are you talking about this one down here? The supply or the demand level? And then we'll move on to the live market. The demand level. Yeah, I, I would have taken this. I just wasn't looking. I was preparing for the session and, uh, you know, had emails coming in and I had instant messenger up, which is never a good idea. Um, but yeah, there's nothing better about this one than this one. I just, I just didn't see it and didn't take it. Okay, that's all. All right. Okay. Um, let's move on. Any questions on that? We can always, again, it's just the same picture that we worked on last week. So let's go into the live market here. Okay, and hopefully this is helpful. Again, I want to show you a real application of what we're doing here. Um, all right. Uh, let's take a look. So everybody should be able to see the live chart of the euro, okay? Uh, Apollo, yeah, I spend very little time watching the markets. Uh, I am, and I can tell you, after our sessions over here, I'm not, I don't have any more trading to do today. I mean, I've got longer, you know, I've got swing trades and stuff, uh, um, but uh, when it comes to short-term trading, I, I'm, you know, that, you're talking maybe a couple hours in the morning, okay? All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on. So here is the euro. Let's revisit this little one-minute chart for a minute, okay? Because there's lots of stuff going on. Well, first of all, before we do that, take a look at, so everybody can see the euro chart here. Take a look at it again. In the, on the weekly, we're down into our level. And our last session that we had here, we looked at this euro demand levels. Everybody remember this one? We finally hit it yesterday and today. We went pretty deep into it also. And remember, we also pointed out this dollar, U.S. dollar supply level. Somebody asked a little while ago, should we be, you know, buying the dollar here? Um, that's, I think, the the, uh, the last thing you want to be doing here. If anything, uh, you want to be selling it, right? Take a look. You're right into that level with um, with another level sitting just above, okay? Uh, Apollo, yes. Yeah, so Apollo's pointing out something I was going to talk about in a minute, but we can we can point it out now. Um, he's saying, what about the, the level above? That looks better. I would agree with you. It's more of uh, the rally-based drop that we're looking for. Okay. Remember, most, you know, the, our best levels are rally-based drop for supply, drop-based rally for demand, um, not rally-based rally and drop-based drop. Okay. So there's that. Let me grab this chart for you here. Okay. 
And also, too, these short-term, short time frame levels that I showed you, uh, one of them today, okay, remember, um, you don't need, you know, you're in and out of those very quickly, okay? And don't expect prices to shoot up like they did uh, when I was in there. There's a, there's a number of things, remember, um, you know, we're together for an hour here, um, but I spend most of my time in the extended learning track, the graduate online trading program at Online Trading Academy. So there, there's a lot we, and, and this isn't a, kind of a pitch for the program. I just want you to know there, there's, there's more to this than just, uh, um, you know, there's all these little odds enhancers that we talk about. You've probably seen them in some of the recordings I've done. Um, one of the things I want to point out is making sure that it's a fresh level. Okay? That's something we focus on a lot in the trading room at Online Trading Academy. Right? We don't want to take the second, third, fourth pullback into a level. We want to make sure it's fresh. That's when you're going to get your biggest pop out of the level. Okay? Harley, good question. Uh, how many ticks do you go for? Um, you should try for at least two to one. So if you're risking, you know, five ticks, uh, you know, go for like ten or so. All right? Okay. All right, so dollar into supply here with an even better looking supply level above, euro into demand, that means in the smaller time frames, we probably, probably want to be leaning on demand levels. Take a look at this area right here on the one minute. I was going to point this out to you too. This is very important. So here's where that entry was taken, right here that I showed you. But look at this level, right? Doesn't this look like the exact same level, just the... Uh, just the opposite of, of what I of what I took today. Doesn't that look just like it? Okay, here's another very important point for you. Um, there you go. All right, so uh, see the supply level I just drew in? Remember, here's the demand level. Here's where I bought to make that $1,800 off this level right here. This is the entry. But look at this supply level here. You know, how come when price come back came back to it, it, it bounced a little bit, but then went right through it? Why is that? What, what's the answer? It's very important that you understand this, this concept right here. Why did this demand level work so well? Why is this supply level, which actually looks better, how come this one failed miserably? Why is that? Okay. Why would I never take this supply level as an entry, but why would I always take this demand level as an entry? Exactly. Dark, uh, yeah, the larger time frame, look at the daily chart, okay? Your short-term supply levels should fail. They should all fail really you know really well your short time frame demand levels should should work out pretty well okay that's the key so the larger time frame is telling us which uh you know whether to be a buyer or a seller so even though the picture of the setup is going to look identical okay i'm going to ignore every supply level that shows up and uh and focus on taking the demand levels Does that make sense the odds are stacked in the favor of the buyer here not the seller all right okay Let's move on. Okay. Uh, Rafa, yes. Yeah, so, again, on the daily chart, we're into larger time frame demand, which means on the smaller time frame, okay, the well, larger time frame is down, but it's, it's likely to turn here. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, Rafa, I don't know if you were in our last session, um, but, uh, but again, we want to be, you know, everything we're talking about here has to do with market timing. Okay, we are definitely, you know, our strategy is definitely uh, attempting to time the market's turning points in advance with a very high degree of accuracy. All right, and and then you'll get it. All right, yeah, uh, thanks, Paulo. All right, so let's uh, let's let's move on. Let's go to a little bit bigger time frame. We don't need to watch a one minute chart anymore. Let me clean this chart up for you, and then we'll move on. Okay, uh, trying trader, excellent question. Uh, very good question there. Let's answer that. Okay. So, trying trader is uh, asking, how long does it take to become, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying trader. I trade the S and P more than anything else. Um, definitely, the S and P is probably the number one market. I definitely the number one market I trade, and then the currencies are after that. Okay. But, um, but yeah, great question. How long does it take to some for someone to get good at this? The answer is, I would say, it's really this. It depends on, um, you know, a lot of people think education is the most important thing. Um, I, I kind of agree with that, but 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 in the trading industry, I'd say the biggest problem is the education, right? Because um, so so what I'm getting at is, 
the, it, it depends on your education. If, if you have proper education and you learn the right way from the beginning, you know, I see those people. It's not that difficult for them. But if you, if you learn this stuff the wrong way from the beginning, um, it could take forever. You know, those people, most, the majority of those people, as you see with the numbers, don't make it. They end up losing, losing their money, right? So it all depends on, you know, if you're, if, if you're learning the right way, uh, you know, it's not that, doesn't, it's not that big a deal. Okay? Now again, I'm not trying to say that, uh, that I'm like trying to, you know, that, that I've got some golden strategy here. Okay, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not looking to, uh, you know, create the next, you know, uh, cool strategy. All I'm saying is, is that how you make money buying and selling anything in your life is exactly what you need to be doing here. The problem is, everybody learns to do this the opposite of that. Okay, people read the trading books, and that's that's poison, right? You're going to learn to buy, you know, you're going to learn uptrends. You're going to learn to buy after a big rally in price, right? Um, you're, you're gonna learn, you know, the indicators. You're gonna, you know, you know, all the ways that you learn to buy into a market are always late after prices have already rallied a ton, okay? You would never do that in any other part of your life. That's, that's my, uh, right? So, just, um, yeah, save, save your money on courses, save your money on books, okay? Uh, think about how you, how you buy things when you go to the grocery store and buy food. You ever offer to pay more for the food than they're asking for it? I mean, think of your favorite restaurant and your favorite meal at that restaurant. When the, when the, when the server brings a check, do you ever offer to pay double or more because you like the food so much? Of course not, okay? Um, so just, you know, do the same thing here. All right. Let's take a look. Yeah, so the left chart up here is the U.S. dollar. Again, into supply, euro into demand. Uh, that's what I would be playing off of, um, you know, this week, okay? And let's move on to another market. All right. Why don't we jump down to, um, let's take a look. Um, Rafa, right after the session today is a, is a great time to write, uh, write that email, because I'll be on email working on a, a big project for the rest of the day today. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the pound. Everybody should see the pound here. Let me just recapture the picture for you. Okay. And let's see, I don't know why all these lines are in here. Way too many lines in this chart. Okay, so it looks like we drew these lines in last time, but the pound has not reached any of these levels. Um, okay, pound's getting a little bump here. Uh, we kind of ignored this big area here, which, you know, prices would probably turn. I guess they're hitting this level and turning already. You know, the, the, the issue with the pound here on the daily chart is you're, you're hitting this level and prices look like they're turning, you know, because the dollar's also hitting supply. So we may have went a little low there for an entry, okay? Abel, uh, I, I can tell you, I can answer that question real easily. Uh, most of the time, we're doing the exact opposite of that strategy. Okay? All right. Uh, so let's, uh, let me go to a different market. Now, and I can go to any market you want to go to, so let's just find somewhere you may have an entry, uh, fairly close. Or, let's see. Yeah, just a sec. Um, Euro yen? We can look at Euro yen. Let's take a look at Euro yen. Yeah, I don't really care which. I just bounce around to like two or three markets to see if anything's close. Uh, trying Trader, do you always have pending orders? Um, I have uh, two ways that I do this for my personal accounts. Uh, one is an auto, I've, I've automated strategy that does this. Uh, so those are those are always pending orders once the trade uh, is is out there. And uh, on the other one, um, for for the other account, uh, Half the time they're pending orders, uh, the other half are very short-term trades, so I'm just kind of pushing the buttons on those. But I strongly recommend pending orders, okay? Uh, sure, Abel, we can look at dollar-yen, absolutely. Uh, someone wanted to look at euro-yen first, so let's take a look at that, okay? So, uh, here we go. So you should be able to see the euro-yen on your chart. If we look at the larger time frame, we see prices down, you know, quite a bit. Um, so we want to probably find a demand level below current price, but when you look at the daily chart, there's still a little ways to go before before we get down to this, you know, 106 in change area down here. Okay, so I think the daily chart really really says it best here. Let's map this out on the daily chart, and then we can refine this on the smaller time frames. Okay. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna expand this chart a little bit, and uh, let's let's start to do what we you know we worked out last time. All right, sure I can refresh this, no problem. Okay, so we want to start with current price, okay, and then we want to figure out where where the uh, you know the origin of the last strong rally and uh, and decline in price happened from. Right, so on this chart, it's going to be fairly fairly easy. We've got this level up here, and again, everything we do is very rule based. So if I'm doing something that doesn't make uh, a ton of sense to you, you just you know you probably just don't know the rule, and we can get there. Okay, so let me put some lines in this chart, and let me bring this chart over a little bit. There's one, and the demand level. You know, we actually have a gap down here, which is really nice, right? A gap represents really the strongest supply and demand imbalance, okay? All right. So these are both, um, I would say these are both fresh levels. Yeah, this bottom level, I guess price did rally away and two candles later came back and touched it, all right? But because price just touched that level and, and then turned higher, that's actually a, a clue. There's probably a ton of demand down there. You see how that little wick comes down there and just touches that? So these would be the next... Uh, you know, two likely strong turning points in this market. If you're looking to catch, you know, a bigger bigger move on the daily. Um, but if you're not looking to swing trade or position trade, that's fine as well. Um, but when prices come into the either of these levels, you also know what you want to be doing on the smaller time frames. Okay. So given that we've we've mapped out where our larger time frame areas are in the chart, where supply exceeds demand up here, and where demand exceeds supply down here. Now we can go to smaller time frames and look for levels. For example, take a look at this 240-minute uh, chart just to the left of the uh, euro yen. Take a look at this, you know, the this the origin of this strong drop in price at 110.50. Okay, see this area here. Let me draw this in, and then I'll explain something to you. All right, let me just. Uh, this is a little level right here. Again, not our ideal level. But it is the origin of a pretty strong drop in price. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So let me recapture the chart for you. Correct, Paulo. Correct. Okay. And don't worry about prices. You know, you might look at this and say, well, what if prices don't make it back to uh, the level? Um, I would tell you, and, and the veterans in here will probably tell you too, um, I'd say prices always come back to the level. You know, Occasionally, is there a level prices don't come back to? Maybe, but um, I don't. I don't remember ever remember seeing a level where prices didn't come back to eventually. Um, think about you know, and, and they really have to. And if you under, if you if you think about what these levels represent, you'll understand why they have to. Remember these these order these levels represent real willing buyers and real willing sellers. This is not again just uh, conventional technical analysis, right? So prices are always going to go to where the orders are. Otherwise, the big banks and institutions wouldn't be in business. Okay, But let me get back to my point here so you understand uh, how to map this stuff out. So this level is right around 110.50. So let's take a look at this daily chart. We see here's 110.50 right up in here, right? Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's see exactly where it's at. Hang on. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a kind of a red line right at 110.50, and I'm going to ask you a question because you need to focus on uh, this question here. All right, that red line on the daily chart is, is right where that smaller time frame supply level comes in on the daily. So let me ask you, is that smaller time frame intraday supply level, is that well-placed or, or not well-placed on the larger time frame supply demand curve that we've mapped out here? In other words, based on the larger time frame, Okay. Um, okay. Based on a larger time frame, is is that in a good area to short or a bad area to short? Another way to say it, yeah, I would agree with you. It's it's well placed, right? Again, is it is it near larger time frame supply or is it near larger time frame demand? It doesn't have to be near larger time frame supply, but it cannot be near larger time frame demand. That's that's the big thing. Okay. All right. So yeah, we'd need a little rally in price, but again, if and when prices get to this level, what's another word for supply? What do we call that? What's another word for it? 
right? What would a what would a bank call it? What would an institution call it? If you worked at a bank with, yeah, they call it retail. They would never call it resistance. They would call it retail, right? Okay. Right. And when prices are at retail levels in any business anywhere in the world, what do you want to do? You want to be the buyer or the seller, right? You want to be the seller, of course. Okay. But remember, what makes this difficult for people is that when prices get to retail levels, the news is almost always good. The trend is going to be up, okay, and you're going to have nice, pretty green candles on your screen, all right? Um, okay. And uh, and remember, too, you know, if you, if you start talking to people, uh, I get emails from people once in a while that say, you know, I was, I was talking to a friend about this, and, and you know, they trade, and, and uh, you know, they, they, they don't really get it because it's, you know, almost opposite of what the books say. If, if that happens to you when you're talking to your friends, don't try to convince them too much. Remember, uh, you know, let, let people do their thing. Um, that just leaves more money for the rest of us, right? Okay. Yeah, Paulo, uh, let, let me take a look. So any questions on this one? Again, I just wanted to point out that important concept of larger time frame areas, smaller time frame levels that you should take or not take. Okay. All right. Someone wanted to look at the dollar yen. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and let me go back and make sure I'm not missing any important questions. I'm trying to get to all of them. Rafa, that's a good question. If someone could help with Rafa's uh, question, that would be great, because I, I can't answer that. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, Paulo, you know, I wouldn't say that. You know, an institution, a bank, they, they know where they own inventory from, and they, which means they know where they need to sell the inventory to, to make a profit, right? Okay, and uh, a big bank, you know, knows where all the supplies and where all the demand is typically. Well, they know where their supply and demand is. And and and, and I wouldn't even think of it that deep because the chart's telling you where all that stuff is anyway. Okay. All right. Thanks for helping with that uh, question. Excellent. Okay. Um, all right. Let's uh, move on. So I want to look at uh, dollar yen here. So here's the dollar yen, and let's see what we have here. So we, we've uh, we've had a nice rally underway in this market, right? We've coming off coming off a, a huge huge downtrend, um, and if you take a look at the uh, you know the daily chart, we've just we've just come back to uh, you know we've we've just had a big rally and then and then you know in basically one big red bar we've come all the way back to the origin of that rally. So there's probably something in this area, you know, that represents demand. Uh, this is just the reason why I'm not going to. I'm not too excited about this area is because it's a big sloppy area with way too much risk. We'd have to come down to a smaller time frame to to find something to uh, buy against. So let's take a look at the hourly chart. Let's come down to an hourly chart. Let's see if there's anything there. Okay. So let me get the hourly going here. Um, and it's not that uh, it's not that we are not excited about this chart. Uh, there's just not a whole lot of uh, you know we're going to have to do some work to find something clean on here. Okay. Uh, trying trader, yeah, there, there's, there's, a, there's a, a few. Number one, where is that level in the bigger picture? Number two, is it a fresh level? That's a big one that people, uh, you know, mess up. Okay, it's got to be a fresh level. Uh, number three, is there a significant profit uh, margin with it? Meaning, is there room to the, uh, you know, is there room to the, uh, you know, the, the nearest opposing level? Things like that. All right. Okay, so uh, on the dollar yen here, we're looking for anything to the left that represents demand. So um, here's and 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 to to that question that just came up, let's let's draw on a level here. So I'm on the hourly chart, well, we see in the big picture we probably want to uh, be a buyer at some point soon. But where exactly do we do it? Where's the low risk, high reward, and high probability buying opportunity? We've got this kind of obvious drop base rally demand level below. The only issue with this one, now I'll recapture the chart for you. Yeah, Rafa, kind people, yeah, it's a great group. Uh, FX Street has done a great job of attracting some really, really quality people um, that are really here to kind of help each other, and it's a good group. Good group. Um, okay. So uh, we've got that level below. The only issue with that one that I've just drawn in there is that uh, if you look, price has already come back to that level. So
So we can't officially call that a fresh level. Okay? But one of the things we do with that concept, that rule, is we don't just want to say only buy the first pullback. Okay? That, that's okay, but we can do better than that. Instead, what we want to do is take this a little bit deeper all right, and say, well, uh, whether prices have pulled back into this level or not, you know, how deep are the retracements going into this level? So if you look at this area I'm pointing at now, we see the prices have not declined too deep into the level. In fact, they just kind of touched it and took off. What does that tell us about the demand levels? Is it, is it likely to be still, you know, w uh, a significant amount of willing buyers left or, or no? You know, in other words, would we want to buy there again or, or not? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's probably still a decent level, okay? In fact, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of going to say something, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but, uh, just hear me out, but, you know, you might have five, six, seven, eight pullbacks into a level, and it still may be a great buying opportunity. What you want to watch for is how deep prices are moving into the level. As a good rule of thumb, okay, as a good rule, once prices have, have penetrated, you know, half, uh, 50 percent or more into the level, you probably want to stop taking it, okay? Because, you know, again, think of what this stuff really represents. Think of the real willing buyers and real willing sellers. My experience in this business started on a trading floor with buy orders and sell orders in front of me, real ones, not not things you see on a level two screen or bids and offers on a on a trading matrix. Okay, that's not real. Okay, um, so that's what this level represents. So every time prices come back into this level, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, someone's kind of commenting on it there. Once price, every time prices come back into this level, some of the demand, the willing buyers are able to buy. Okay, so again, each time you come back to a level, that, that amount of willing demand is decreasing, and the whole supply-demand equation is becoming more in balance. Okay, there we go. So, uh, yeah, I would monitor that level. That level looks uh, decent, and if we check, it's just below 83, so let's take a look at the uh, daily chart, and if we buy just below 83, we're buying right at the extreme of this area of demand here, right? Okay. So uh, not not bad. And if we look just below 83 on this 240-minute chart, let's do that. Okay. Um, let me let me pull this chart up for you. Okay. Get rid of some of these. Blow this up. Let me capture the chart for you. Got a little little nose issue going on today, so hopefully uh, that's not. Uh, hopefully things are coming through clear. Sorry about that. So just below 83 and down to about 82.80. So we're looking to buy in this area here. Okay, um, that's okay. And 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 another thing, another odds enhancer that we like to use at Online Trading Academy are levels on top of levels. So it's sitting just below that area that we found on the 60-minute chart is this demand level down here. At uh, which starts about 82.60, okay, which is just just under, okay. All right, so you really have. Let me scrunch this up. Okay, I'm kind of bouncing around here. Here we go. And let me take this picture. So there. So you have two levels sitting on top of each other, okay. All right. Uh, the one on the right is sitting just on top of the one on the left, all right? And uh, we, we like that. We like levels on top of levels, okay? And the other reason why we probably don't want to be a buyer above 83, okay, another reason, take a look at, uh, oh, I don't know, let's take a look at the weekly chart, okay? All right? It's, it's, not, uh, it's not the greatest area, but... You know, look look to the left of 84. The reality is the origin of this strong drop in price that I'm pointing to now, where did it start? It started between, you know, 84 and 86, right? So we don't want to be buying anywhere near 84, right? That's like a count suicide. You follow me? Okay, so if we're buying below 83, at least we're not buying right into that that larger time frame supply area, right? We're buying a little bit closer to uh, in between 82 and 83. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so that's another reason why I went a little bit lower than current price in in this market. Does that make sense? 
Okay. Uh, Dart, yeah, I see your question there. How close to the larger? Uh, the, the your risk reward on, on the actual level that you find is going to dictate that. So as long as those levels we found have a decent uh, profit margin with them, risk reward, we're good. Okay. So by doing your analysis the right way, it's going to force you to move lower on the curve because you're not going to be offered big profit margins on the on you know for those you're not going to be offered big profit margins with your demand levels when you're too close to larger time frame supply. It's just not possible. Okay, the chart will take care of that for you if you're doing the analysis right. Okay, uh, Roxanne, why why do we like levels on top of levels? Well, let let me ask you a question. Okay, remember I started my career on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, specifically. Uh, in, in the uh, currencies, right? So I was handling order flow, right? Real willing buy orders, real willing sell orders. And your, your question is, you know, what, what, what's the whole point of the whole levels on top of levels? So let's say you're on the trade desk today, okay? And you get a free pass and you can actually trade your own accounts and you see the largest stack of sell orders on the desk in front of you is at, uh, is at say, 88, okay? So let's say that lar largest stack of sell orders, the real supply that day in this market is at 88. And, and the nearest willing stack of willing buyers, the nearest, you know, the buy orders, when you look down on the trade desk in front of you, is until 80, I don't know, you know, uh, quite a bit lower. The whole point is, Roxanne, where are you going to be comfortable selling short that day? What price level? 86, right? You can't lose. You see the orders there. You're going to be a short seller at 86. Does that make sense? Okay. Right, and and you're going to do, uh, you know, so you can't lose. It's free money, right? That's why it was illegal for me to trade my own account because those were real willing buy and sell orders. But let me ask you this, Roxanne: Is there anything that would make you more comfortable selling at 86, selling short at 86? How about this? How about if there was an even bigger stack of sell orders at 86.05? Would you now be more comfortable selling short at 86? Right? If you're looking down, you see those big stacks of sell orders. Right, you'd probably be more comfortable now selling. Yeah, so if you agree with that logic, then what does that picture look like on a price chart? It's levels on top of levels. Okay, right. And again, it brings up the same point that we keep getting to. Instead of just reading trading books and and believing that information and trading that information because the book says so, think of think you know think this stuff through for yourself. Um, you know, think of think of the you know think of what a what a you know what represents a good buying or selling opportunity on a chart, and then go look for that picture, right? Okay, everybody here already knows how to properly buy and sell things. I hope, right? Um, hopefully, you're not, you know, when you go buy a car, hopefully you don't offer more than what the what, what the car dealership is asking, right? We all offer lower prices, right? We don't we don't uh, we don't pay the restaurant twice what the bill is because we like the food so much, we pay what the bill is and hopefully give them a little tip if the service was good, right? We all know how to do this already, okay? All I'm suggesting is is do start doing exactly that on a price chart, right? And I'll tell you who the, we have 111 people with us today. I'll tell you who the best traders in our group are. You want to know who the best traders are here? And I don't know, I don't think I know anybody personally in here. I mean, Boyke in the group, we've been together for a while, but... Um, but I could tell you, I could tell you who the best traders in the room are, or the best potential traders. You want to, you want to know how I'll tell you? Let me ask you a question. Anybody in our group cut coupons for anything, food, uh, anything out there? Anybody cut coupons? All right. So, so these these people that are saying yes, those are those are already real good, potentially really good traders. Now, here's the best traders in the group. Has has anybody ever actually sent in a rebate? Now, I'll admit I never have. I, I probably have a stack of them that I meant to send in, but I never did. Who has sent in a rebate? Okay. Now, you people are the best traders in the group okay? because you demand lower prices. You will go out of your way to pay lower prices for things you're going to buy. right? Now, doesn't it sound crazy when you think about trading? Nobody does that, right? Everybody waits for prices to rally. They wait for uptrends. They wait for good news, and then they buy. Why do you think the majority of people lose it at trading? That's the whole point, okay? A rebate. Yeah, if you don't live in the U.S., maybe you're not familiar with that. That's like if you, uh, you know, a, a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, if you're buying something, um, you know, part of the pitch will be, you know, if you if you buy this, they're going to give you a, a, a little thing to send in, and they'll send you some money back, you know, okay? 
Yeah, things like that, exactly. All right. Excellent. So, um, all right. Yeah, so you guys are already good at that. Excellent. Um, nice job. So let me go back to this chart here. And just a sec. I just want to make sure I type my email address in there. So I just typed it in there. It's sidon at tradingacademy.com. All right. So I just... Um, yeah, I just looked at the time, and I see we're, we're about out of time here. Uh, time really flew by this session. But again, um, so here's my email address. Send me an email anytime if you have any questions or comments. Um, just, you know, I'm, I'm here to, I'm only here for you. Um, so uh, I know we're going to have another webinar or two in December. And again, I think uh, instead of doing, going in with a big lesson, um, next session we'll probably focus more on the Forex futures. And we'll start with, uh, and we'll stick with the smaller time frames. We'll try to make sure the session is held early in the morning. So there's some trading opportunities that pop up so we can kind of walk through these things together in real time as, as the trades are happening. Um, but anyway, thanks for your time and thanks for your trust. Uh, this, this is a big thing, you know, this is, uh, this is real money, so, um, we don't take this lightly. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. Thank you.